afternoon, Good South afternoon. Africa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay. Happy Monday. Good afternoon. Someone owes someone a Coke here. Because uh, you guys why? at the same time. The first person that says Jinx owes the other person a coffee. I don't do huh? fizzy drinks. Yeah, exactly. Okay, too. vegan. I'll get you sparkling water <laughs> during the ad break. <laughs> so today we kick off our Monday with a little motivation as we sit down with John Sene, a best-selling author of two books as well as one of SA's top futurists and trend specialist. Yep, and in the kitchen, we're keeping the spirits of summer as we feature Willie's essential picnic items to guide you to the perfect summer picnic. Plus, Chef Kim helps, helps us prepare the perfect treat to go with your cup of tea as we make a clover soy milk lamington. Sounds yummy. Yum. Now, did you know that in South Africa, a child goes missing every hour? That's a lot of children. And in today's yep. Mummy Monday edition, we chat to Thalma Malchas, a social worker from Childline, about child safety during the holidays. So do join the conversation. We'd love to hear from you on our social media platforms. And tell us how do you keep your little ones safe during the holiday season. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express. We'll pop over to our com um, comment section on our Facebook page. Now, the Woodstock Darlings truly entertained crowds in 2012 in the first installment of Satin, of Satin to Sequins. Now this brilliant Cape Town Heritage musical production, Satin to Sequins, More Than a Minstrel, has been reworked and will be back at the iconic Baxter Theatre for three weeks during November 2018. Yeah, a funny, educational and festive production performed in Afrikaans and English. Here are the Woodstock Darlings. <laughs> Like I love you. I know. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you so much. So tell us. So the original production, yes. Saturn's to Sequence, was first put on the theatre in 2014. 2014. Yes. So now, what's new about it? What's changed? Well, firstly, she's in it now. Yeah. <laughs> so Fabulous. Nice. Which is really great. The rose yeah. among the thorns. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Full <Four> thorns. <laughs> <laughs> No, lots have to, and I mean, you were in the, the beginning of it. Yes, um, we started at the Jazz of Stone. Um, so it was sort of a community theatre, and yeah. then um, uh, it, it grew, you know. Um, uh, original songs came in, and, and uh, they, they worked on the story a bit. And now it's like a, a professional production at the Baxter Theatre. So that it's sort of full amazing. circle. Because <laughs> I started with Oddball four years ago, and... Um, and now I'm joining them again, so it's quite nice. Yeah. Amazing. So interestingly enough, so you, as producers, um, you wanted to demystify um, what min being a minstrel is. Yeah. Although one, w I'm wondering, it's a culture that you own, though. Uh, Why would you need to demystify it? I think people have, um, you know, this notion that they know it or they understand okay. it because Tweed and Eva Yah happens, and they see them all in the streets and stuff. And when I joined um, the company. I didn't know much about it, and um, so this was a great history lesson for me as oh, well. Oh, wow. Um, you know, it's about communities coming together. There's a lot of sacrifices, you know, that they make during the year because they practice all year, right? Throughout the year. Throughout really? the year. Every Wednesday evening to Sunday afternoon. So it's not just uh, the team walking on, on that specific day. It's communities come together. It's sharing food. It's kids yeah. uh, learning to play the trumpet uh, and, and reading um, and something to look forward to at the end of the year. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's the whole 
communities are so still of Mitchell's Plain. I live in Burkham, so Park. I get to see you get to um, see oh, yeah, all, all of them. And uh, the entire neighborhood comes, comes alive. Together. And we all come it's up beautiful. to the window and we just watch it's and it's chilled that's, that's out. And that's the thing with people, you bring people together and yeah. it's different creeds. You can be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, street sweeper, you are one, and that's which is beautiful fabulous. about it because the music is sort of like the common denominator from the bricklayer to the guy sweeping the street. Yeah. And, mm. and, and uh, it's amazing though because a lot of, there's some council workers in, in, in the, a lot, a lot of council workers in, the, in, in this group. So, uh, during the normal day, they are uh, sweeping the street, and on that day, they actually own the street. You know, yeah. the wow. faces are painted, and, and people are looking at them, and, and they enjoy that. They, they probably get 100 likes on Instagram that day <laughs> or <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> but that's what it's so about. So it comes with yeah. a lot of pride. And yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And I think yeah. this is what the show focuses on. Uh, it shows uh, the, the audience what exactly it entails. Mm. There's a love story. It, it talks about the sacrifices. The that, families hey, make. How's it going? The um, families make. <laughs> Uh, yeah, couples. Uh, uh, she plays my wife um, in the in the production, and we have to make sacrifices for mm. the team. Um, we talk about gambling, uh, drugs, uh, um, mm. um, all of that. Uh, we talk about a guy who just moved in from Melkbostrand, and uh, it just so happens that he lives next to the clubhouse, and he just popped in, and he's like, "I want to join this because I'm a church boy, and uh, mm. I like the sound." So that there's all these elements. Um, of what makes this thing such a beautiful production. Okay, so it's I want beautiful. to know, who gets to wear the satin jackets and who gets to wear the sequins, sequins. ones? <laughs> okay, so you, you start you with start the satin with the, jacket yeah. and you sort yeah. of okay. work your way. We're up to. Then one day you'll end up with a sequins jacket. Right, guys? Yes. And, wow. <laughs> and how do you end up there? Because of your dance skill, your singing skill, your commitment, your... Uh, okay, there's uh, uh, the guy right in front, you call him the drum major. So, and there's like five major steps to becoming the next best drum major. So, mm -hmm. we, we actually uh, show people, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that in the production. There's a certain way you hit that tambourine thing. You can't just walk in and say, I want to play this thing. No, yeah. there's, there's like certain sounds. It's called the singles, the doubles, doubles and the kneels, which is like your knee. A but knee. The, and, but and there's a well. way of... Don't worry, I'm, I'm not that good. Yeah. You're not so, that good. So, no, no. <laughs> but are you trying at least? Did I try not? <laughs> you, you killed it. You killed it. I mean, it. I can kind of practice. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. It. But the show is vibrant. Um, it is. A lot of choreography, original songs. Alistair yeah. Iqbal uh, songs. worked there. Beautiful. And there's a gentleman, gentleman called um, uh, Claude Jonas, who yeah. uh, he's just a saint. He came on board. He sponsored the clothing. Uh, mm. And he believes That's in the culture. Amazing. He believes yeah. in uh, um, that people should uh, know their heritage, yeah. understand their heritage. There's a lot more than and us just dancing down the road and, and carrying on like... Uh, and is yeah, your cast yeah. all actors and dancers or are they genuine they minstrels? Minstrels. These cats, they are the real deal. We grew, yeah, up, yeah, we grew yeah. up in Malay choirs, we grew up... You see, that's just us walking in the road on one Sunday afternoon and they dress like that. Yes, yes I know. <laughs> it's so much fun. So, are the colours uh, important? Do the colours oh, belong to a oh, sp specific you, group? Yes, it is. I mean, as soon as the, f the competition is done, uh, the, these choirs really plan uh, for the following season. I mean, that's the thing. It's the best dress. It's, it's, they are trophies. They are points. There's, uh, nice. there's mm. about 14 items that you have to do, from uh, English combined chorus to Afrikaans combined chorus. Adult coon song, juvenile coon song, solo, uh, little drum major. It's oh, it's a do. It's wow. a, and it happens it's over organized. a period of like three to four weeks. Wonderful. Every Saturday and perfect. Wonderful. Well, we'll put all of the details of when it's showing and where people can catch this fantastic show on Brilliant. our website. Thank, thank, thank you so much. For thank, you. Today. thank you. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> what a festive way to kick off the week. But after the break, we head over to the kitchen to show you how to make the perfect summer picnic. And on our Mummy Monday edition, we're going to be speaking to a member of the child line about how you can keep your kids safe this festive season. Remember to engage with us on our social media platforms and let us know how you keep your kids safe by tweeting us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. But for now, the music. <laughs> Get ready. The face of cybercrime is changing. And so are we. 
We are smarter. We take charge. We are in control. We are brave, innovative, everywhere. We are Sabrek. Our guests on Afternoon Express fly domestically with Mango. Enjoy outstanding service, online check-in and seat selection. With the widest booking and payment options, Mango is the only airline globally to accept store charge cards as a means of payment. Fly in comfort with ergonomically efficient seats for more legroom aboard a fleet of new generation Boeing 737-800 aircraft. Join the guests of Afternoon Express and fly Mango. afternoon express now what's summer without a picnic whether you're on the beach in a park or even if it's in the lounge spread out with rugs and cushions picnic are uh, picnics are the ultimate way to enjoy your experience with your surroundings delicious foods drinks and of course great company and I mean it is the season to picnic absolutely even during the week I see so many people going to the beach with their picnic baskets laid out and I realize I, I reckon that's going to be my plan for the summer. Have you seen how people have stepped up their picnic game? No, though? I mean, it's a thing. So yeah. I can't just roll out there with like my little plastic sandwich uh -uh. because you can't take plastic to the beach. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what are we going to be doing? So people literally have gone the extra mile when it comes to picnic yeah. now. It's become like a dining experience. Yeah. So I've popped into my lo local Woolies yes. because they've got everything sorted for summer. So everything you're going to need for your picnic. Are. Can we Actually, can we start there? I like, mean, this is, this is how to up your picnic yeah. game. How is this picnic plate? Like, paper plates are not created yeah. equally anymore. That Marble is Marble and gold foiling. I mean, that is oh, insane. Oh, have got the palm one as well. Yeah, so very, oh, much, very much summer, very much what is on trend right now. Yeah. True story, I actually did an event recently, a really high-end event, and I used these, it blew everyone's mind. Yeah. How beautiful do they look? Well, so, that's one zhuzh picnic. Absolutely. And there's no reason to have like the boring little sandwich picnic anymore. Yes. Everything's sorted. So let's talk about what we got to today. So talk about some etiquette first of all, okay? Picnic basket, really great.
but try and take as many things as you can just throw away. You don't want to go home with too much. Also, don't want to leave too much actually at the venue. Yeah. So recycling's big. Throw things away. So if you can have take drinks with you, go for the pina colada bottles like we've got over here. They come in a six pack. When you're done, finish, throw it away. But if you are gonna take a bit of a bubble. Always. Who doesn't? No. <laughs> so if you are going to go um, bring your little champagne, that's really great. Champagne and picnics, are, it's all the rage right now. Yes. These glasses of you are really amazing. They're plastic champagne glasses, but look just as fancy as a real crystal version. Yeah. That's what amazing. I need for... Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take one out for you. Yes, Because I can please. see you were going for it. So what well, I'm doing this... Well, that's on my Christmas list. It is. Think. Absolutely. So what <laughs> I'm doing that, let's see what else we got here. Um, in the picnic basket right now, we've got cheese. You can't have a picnic without cheese. No, cool. But Jeannie, you know cheese, right? You, you Everything, it has to be cheese, that's not a party. Yeah. Cheese selection is pretty great. We did a nice little cheese platter oh, last my week. my favorite as well, Boone yeah. Cass and Emmental. Mm. We did a cheese platter last week, but that's a great version I'll talk about when you can actually get, let me just take it out for you. Grab, can you help me? Here we go, yeah, I'm a lefty. Yeah, yeah. Cheese platter done and dusted for you, perfect for the picnic, ready to go. Look at the little champagne glass, by the way. Amazing. Love it, great. Those are great, and also at the end of the party, just throw them out. And yeah. then what, it, what is the sticker? Oh, wow. Can I tell you why? Perfect. Why? So I used to think, oh, why do they do that? It makes no sense. But if you're busy picnicking, right, you take it off and you stick that in the grass. Oh, it's not going to fall over. That's very clever. Cool. We're going to pour the salt and pina colada. That's all you. With pleasure. So, okay, where are we at? So, this is why I come to work, really. Really, really. <laughs> Volavants are very French, okay? Mm -hmm. It's a tedious little task where you have to, like, make puff pastry, shape them perfectly, and then fold them with your favorite goodies. Yeah. I'm going to try and point over here. Here we go, over here. They are over here. They are so delicious. You get different variants. Jeannie, you can never do a picnic boring ever again. That's no, amazing. Those you are just done really me. upped my picnic really. game. And we're serving it on this beautiful plastic way again. It's super lightweight. Nothing's going to break. You can just pack it back into your basket, take it away. Let's exactly. actually make something. Okay. Cool. So cheese straws over here. Okay. They're great. All you're going to do is get, can I get some prosciutto from you? And then we'll pack it over there. I, I, with I pleasure? love how oh, you... you're actually going to make me work. Okay. Pleasure. Prosciutto. Okay. You, okay, got the prosciutto. You have also got the very oh, big Italian antipasto selection. That's got all the meats in here. All right. Yummy. All you're going to do, and this is so classic, but it's a, it's a, it's an oldie that's a goldie. All right. You'll be <laughs> doing it. Your grandkids will be doing this. Cheese straws. Wrapped around with some prosciutto ham. Oh. It's I delicious. It's so good and so easy. Yeah, the stuff's great. You're gonna look like such an amazing um, <laughs> <I know>. host <laughs> after this one. I will be winning. There we picnics go. After Talking this. about um, serving ware. These little cups, lettuce cups, are the best serving way you get. Yeah. So you can take some of that ham that we've got there, some of the cheese, actually serve it in here. It's really great. You're not going to get messy or anything. Yeah. And you're eating the serving way. I like to, to put, like, to do just to layer different things. So you actually use those lettuce things as your sandwich holders. I would yeah. put cheese and the ham in that thing. Absolutely. Oh. And that's what makes it so great to take with our picnics. Pop this over here. What I've got is some prawn cocktail. And all I'm going to do is actually serve our prawn cocktail, which I also got at Willie's in these little lettuce cups. And again, prawn cocktail can get messy if you're outdoors, but if you're serving it in these little lettuce cups, it's not gonna get messy at all. Yeah, that is such a good idea. Are you enjoying that? It's really good. <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah. So those are done. It's a second little trick. It really is amazing. So you're able to create a complete dining experience just by popping in at Willie's. They've got everything covered for you this summer. And then, what are we doing? What, what haven't we spoken about? We, we're Ooh. winning, guys. Oh, so these the, little oh. samosa things? Yeah. What so are Willis they? So also launched a global range of some flavors from all over the world. Yeah. One of them, one of my favorite items I got are these tentacles. Yeah, delicious. I mean, they're delicious, so good. So chilled. And we've got caramelized um, onion hummus. Those are really great. <gasps> that Samosas. is my favorite thing it ever. That, with the chickpeas in it. With the chickpeas on top. Go the, out. And the, the onion glaze. What is Look it? Look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's so, it's like a step up from your normal um, hummus. Guys, everything is sorted for you for your next picnic and your outdoor experience with Woolies. Summer is done. Absolutely. Yeah. You, are, you are, look at you. No, look, I've just, I've, I've been, summer is here. <laughs> <laughs> and picnics are going to be amazing. So to get the list of ingredients that we've used today, all you need to do is SMS the keyword EAT to 33650. SMS is 1 round 50 each. No free SMS is apply. Let's go picnic, baby. <laughs> I'll be there to handle that picnic shortly. But the holiday season should be a stress-free period spent relaxing with your loved ones. But with the busyness of the festive season, the one thing we cannot get relaxed about is child safety. It's really important that parents become extra vigilant with their children. And here to tell us more about that, we have Thelma Malchus in the loft. Welcome, Thelma. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So we're always worried about our children's safety, but particularly in the, in the festive season, mm. because most of the places we go to are 
packed with people yeah. and children are also ex excited and parents are, are inundated with so much. But in general, what are the just the elements that a parent should always have down in terms of child safety? Okay, when, like you said, when it started this season, obviously it's jam-packed, malls are jam-packed. Everywhere you go, there's a lot of people. And where it concerns children in general, um, it becomes problematic because children don't think like adults at the end mm. of the day. They mm. will generally just do what they feel they want to do in a specific moment. So children will be at home during the holiday season. Um, parents need to be aware that they cannot leave their children alone at home, unsupervised. Um, anything can happen, as you know. Um, even if sub siblings are left um, at home, I mean, there's accidents, there's fires, there's anything that can happen. If you have a pool at home, um, that is a danger in itself. Young children, um, in a second, they can wander off mm. toddlers, you know, small, mm. small ones. Mm. Um, accidents happen, they can fall in the pool. So parents need to be aware that they need to put safety measures in place when it comes to the holiday season. Even if you're going to have a bride, you know, those yeah. are the, the, the events that you hear children end up in hospital. They play too near to a fire at the end of the day. So I think... Some of the things that parents need to be aware of that the holiday season is really a season where alcohol consumption is at its greatest. Um, car accidents, don't let your children play in the street. You know, drunk drivers, you get all of those happening during the holiday season. So I think parents should generally be aware that they should um, speak to their children constantly, you know, about safety. I mean, I work with Childline in, in my line of work. I find that we mostly deal with the effects of traumatic incidents at the end of the mm. day. But in the medical field, there's a line that says prevention is better than cure. cure so yeah. I think um, we need to look at sitting with our children, talking to them, putting down ground rules um, for when we go out to the malls. Yeah. You know, work out the plan, work out the contingency safety plan. So that when you do go to the mall, your child knows exactly what will yeah. happen. I mean, bottom line is you actually just can't leave your children unsupervised. Exactly. Um, and a lot of parents also just think, oh, my child's at home and the older sister or the older brother is looking after him and they're fine uh, as long as they're at home. But that's not even safe anymore. Like we that's always have to watch safe. our children. And so when it comes to um, issues like stranger danger, um, some parents and I were talking the other day to say that now we have to teach our children that it's not only strangers who might try to harm you. Exactly. Sometimes it's people you know and, and, and you your think family. you're okay around, right? Yes. What are some of the, the ways that we can acclimatize our children to the idea that I could be in a dangerous situation at any time and these are the things I need to look out for? Well, um, if you, I mean, you can see in your child's behavior when your child is uncomfortable around certain people, um, I think you should address it with your child openly. Mm -hmm. um, ask your child, you know, what makes you what uncomfortable you feel, yeah. around this person. Um, when you speak to your child, speak in a childlike language. Mm. Don't try to use big words, you know. Um, we always say stranger danger. But who is a stranger to a child? An adult person is a trusted person to any child. Yeah, a child so don't true. necessarily um, distinguish between you look bad or... Um, the, the things you are doing is per se not a, a behavior that is not is appropriate. In yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I think what we need to do is to tell, say to that child, if you feel uncomfortable around the adult person, please come tell me. Come tell me. Um, yeah. You know, people that offer you out of the blue um, sweets, stuff like that. Uh, people that kind of likes to want to win your trust. Um, instantaneously you know children they trust easily mm. so you need to make your child aware of those aware. small little things yeah. talk to them about that you know when someone approach you come tell mommy what did that adult person yeah. say come yeah. tell daddy speak to an adult person um, in general I think um, safety is something we can talk about the whole day the whole when it day. comes yeah. to children yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of things happen in the field that I work in. Mm. Um, so I'd say for parents, please be aware over the festive season. Um, don't lose your child out, out of your sight. Don't keep that child out of your sight. Um, always 
put the plan in place when you go out, tell your child, you know, when, we get, when you do get yeah. lost, um, if you're at the beach, show them, go and show them um, where is the lifeguard where station is it safe? so yeah, that they where to also go to have need help, a means yeah. of knowing that I can go there. Um, also, tell your children that uh, uh, they should know all the details or uh, sit with them, especially when they're Absolutely. small. Absolutely. They children should know, should your know name. their phone numbers, they yes. should know their addresses. There's so many things that we can do to keep our children safe, actually. And I think the information is out there if you're really looking for if it. You're really thank looking you so for much it. for joining us today. Tanya. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I think it's crucial that we continue the conversation on our social media platforms. And tell us, how do you keep your little ones safe during the holiday season? Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. Now, coming up after the break, we sit down with John Sinai as we discuss his journey through life and what has shaped him to become the man that he is today. And later on in the show, we take a break and we sit back with Steph Clem and make lamingtons, which with a clover soy milk. Check you out after the break. Every Thursday evening at 7.30, Winner Home gives you the chance to be a weekly winner in our live Open the Door giveaway where you get three chances to win big. Enter online now at winnerhome.tv and you automatically get entered into the grand prize competition where you could win a fully decorated apartment at the Part of Play Lifestyle Estate in Somerset West, valued at over 3 million rand. The lucky winner will also get to choose which of the apartments beautifully decorated by our three competing duos they want to call home. Do you prefer the glamorous design aesthetic of Team RNK? Would you choose the Afrolicious style of Team Contrast Control? Does the permaculture of the perma peeps speak your design language? Best of all, it doesn't matter which apartment you choose because all three have a spectacular view of the golf course and the mountains. Winner Home, Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. on SABC3 with a repeat on Saturday at 3 p.m. The stage is yours. Create a stir this summer with Nola Mayonnaise and Afternoon Express. Every Thursday, the lovely Lucia Mtiane and the lazy Makoti join us in the loft to create a stir and show us how to add a creamy twist to your favorite dishes. When you SMS Nola to double three six five zero for the week's recipe, you're also entered into the grand prize draw to win an LG InstaView fridge worth 35,000 Rand. 
Winning has never tasted so good. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. John Sane was a self-made millionaire with six restaurants by the age of 27. He was almost unstoppable. However, he hit rock bottom and lost everything. It was only later in his life that he found his true purpose, and he's now a best-selling author of two books, one of South Africa's top futurists and trend specialists. Plus, he speaks at events all over the world. Welcome to The Laugh, John. Thank you so much. What a great introduction. Yeah. Mm, except that first part. I wasn't like. The losing of everything. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and believes that anything is possible. Ladies and gentlemen, please will you welcome Mr. John Sane? Hey. Let's go. Nice. We're in uh, LAX, Singularity University, in the streets of New York, beautiful Johannesburg. Have I gone too far? Do you detect something different? If you look inside my head, would you say something's missing? If you could give all your riches just to say the word, would you risk it? These politicians so old can't tell if the dead are living. We are global citizens. I truly believe we live in the most fascinating time known to man. excited speaking to them about mastering the art of disruption thinking bigger being more courageous exposure and mindset wow <laughs> super like, impressive wow. super impressive thank you so much thank you know you. knowing you and knowing what a down to earth person you are and then watching that and just seeing this maverick I'm, I'm just so struck by, you just, you underplay this stuff so much. Why? And I don't know what I'm supposed to do, walk around like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> take me, take me. Is that me. something yeah. you learned over time or were you, t take us through the journey of hitting I, rock I think I've, 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 always, I've always been an early adopter. So I've always been a trend specialist. If I think back to when I was like six, seven years old, I could always tell like Reebok was going to be big or like these brands back then when South Africa, they really didn't know many of these brands. Um, and so that sort of, early adoption always got me to look for the next thing. And I never realized that was what a trend specialist is really, or a futurist is really somebody who's enthused about the future, bringing it back, categorizing it and contextualizing it and sharing it with people so that people can build the courage to make bigger decisions about the future. I yeah. always believe that an entrepreneur is born. The same way as you can teach someone to play a musical instrument, it doesn't mean they're gonna be a great musician. Mm. So the same thing with entrepreneurship. So mm. you've always had this like winning business streak in you, I suppose, from the young age and then your restaurants. And I also heard that you were into a bit of sideline <laughs> dancing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that, um. that, that is in somebody that, yeah. that separates them from the rest in being a good businessman? I, I think there's many different reasons that pe get people to be good business people. I specifically had daddy issues and I didn't want anybody telling me what to do. Yeah. And so my entrepreneurial drive was actually quite broken because there's a, there's a saying I use in my, in my second book that says, are you running away from the darkness or are you running towards the light? Yeah. And one of them is anxious and running away from this dragon that's going to eat it and the mm -hmm. other one's building towards something. I was running away from the darkness. I was running away from poverty and I was running away from ever having any financial constraints like I did when I was younger. Yeah. And wow. that is the biggest problem because if you're ever running away from something, it's gonna catch you eventually. Yeah. And so, so when you eventually mm. found yourself at rock bottom, what mm. are the rungs of, on that you placed on the ladder to get yourself out of there? Because I mean, it's mm. quite a journey. If you're saying you, were, you, were in, you built from a broken place, mm. how did you then reconstruct your framework of, mm. of how to That's build? That's a great question. I think yeah. it's, the first thing you've got to realize is that most people don't realize they're depressed or don't even realize they're being victims. And a lot of society has a default notion of being a victim, complaining, shaming, blaming, not taking responsibility, that's being a victim. Being entitled, mm. that's being a victim. And first you've got to become aware that you are actually suffering from a perspective that's not allowing you to go forward. The second wow. thing is you've got to realize that our lives are made up of rituals and these rituals become habits, these habits become behaviors and these behaviors become our personality. And so we've got to break down our personality into these very moment by moment rituals and allow ourselves to focus on each one of them and switch them slowly, slowly in order for us to change our personality. You know, we don't change our future. I mean, we don't choose our future, we choose our rituals and habits mm. and that becomes our future. And so for me, it was about breaking it down. 
Do mm. you think failure is, necess is necessary to become successful? Like, I mean, you've, you've, got, you've got it all, but yet you still failed at some point and have, have had to, you know, bring yourself up again. I think there's different types of failures. I think some yeah. people get sick. You know, that's a failure of health. Yeah. Some people have bankruptcies like I did. Some mm. people have divorces. Some people have uh, family being lost, uh, being yeah. passed away in a car accident. These are all sort of uh, catalysts that are required uh, in order for us to shatter out of our perspective that we've built for ourselves. And yeah. so we all have these catalysts. The trick is, is how quickly do you make these a conscious memory rather than an unconscious memory? How quickly do you move away from blaming what had happened to yeah. you to taking it as something that powers you up? You know? mm. And if you think about anybody that's really successful, they reached really low, low places yeah. and decided to turn it. Yeah. But a lot of people get stuck there. And that's yeah. also a big problem. You know, depression is a big problem in, in our it society. It is a problem. Mm. You're now on your second book, Magnetize. Yeah. And uh, they're both bestsellers. Yes. And you, you plan to write a book every year. Um, I've got my third one. I've already started wow, my third one. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. So what's mm. Magnetize about? So my, my first book was about how big, how bold, and how courageous are your questions about the future. If you understand technology and our access to the world, this has never happened before. You have access to 4 billion people right now on the internet. I mean, that's just unheard of in history. My second book, Magnetized, was a maturing of that question towards how elegant, deliberate, and conscious is your thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. It's, I think, as society, we have to start seeing business as something that's able to do good for society as well as make you a profit. I think the days are gone for us to have this lack of transparency where balance sheets are everything that we base our businesses yeah. on, creating absolute chaos in our environment, disengaged workforce, a lack of ability to innovate. All these things are based on us prioritizing balance sheet over consumer or environment and I think business just needs to become more elegant and we need to grow up and become more aware and conscious of what our behavior is doing to the society around us and the environment around us and I call it the teenage boy syndrome and it's almost as mm. if the world's stuck in the sort of teenage mm. boy yeah, syndrome of needing more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's healthy actually. I think yeah. it's gotten us to a great place but I think it's time for us to mature. Yeah. You call yourself a futurist. What exactly is that? Well, I, I've, I've never really called myself a futurist. Yeah. Other people call me a futurist, but really what somebody who is able to categorize and contextualize the future. You know, there are so many trends out there. There are so many different things that are popping. Which one actually allows you to make a better decision about your sector, your business, and mm. your life? And so mm. it's really about bringing that clarity into a boardroom and allowing the decision makers to build the courage to go, ah, okay, I see that trend that's moving that way. It might not be relevant to what we're doing right now, but that's definitely where our sector is moving towards. So yeah. it's just about making people more comfortable and optimistic about the future. Yeah. Mm. Well, wow. thank you so much for being here today. And we're going to make, be making a lot of people more optimistic about the future because they can stand a chance to win to your win book, your Magnetized. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So to win a copy of the book, Magnetized, value of 250 Rand, SMS the keyword win and your name and your city to 33650. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50 each and free SMSs do not apply. Competition closes today, the 12th of November at two minutes to midnight. T's and C's on afternoonexpress.co.za. The positive thing about hitting rock bottom is that there's only one way to go from there, which is up. And I think it's safe to say that John is soaring. Now, after the break, we head back into the kitchen with Chef Clem as we make lemon tins with the clover soy milk, which will go perfectly with your cup of tea. And please don't go anywhere because later on in the show, we've got the Woodstock Darlings performing live in the loft. Cue it, boys. <laughs> They're cute, they're cuddly, and they're TV stars. Baxter and Donut, the adorably fluffy four-legged members of the Afternoon Express family, are sharing their daily adventures on social media. To see what Baxter and Donut get up to behind the scenes, follow the adventures of Baxter and the adventures of Donut on Instagram.
Moving out. Need more room. Scaling down. Private property is a great place to start your search. With thousands of new properties from South Africa's top real estate agents, banks, developers and homeowners. It's the easiest way to find your next home. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Search privateproperty.co.za Enter the Winner Home competition on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance to win a brand new, fully decorated apartment at Parterflay Lifestyle Estate developed by Baldwin Properties worth over 3 million rand. Good Hope Soy Milk. Soy goodness, naturally. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. So it's guaranteed to be love at first bite when you try these Clover Soy Milk Lamingtons, drizzled with a decadent chocolate sauce. And this treat is perfect with a cup of tea. If you would like to try this at home, simply SMS Clover to 33650. SMSs are charged at 1950 each, and free SMSs don't apply. Are they lamingtons or lamingtons? They're lamingtons. Lamingtons. But I made them, yeah. so they're clamingtons. Clamingtons. <laughs> but now, are they, are they strictly Cape Townian? Because no. I remember the first time I ever had a lamington was when I moved to Cape Town. And everywhere you go here, you can find lamingtons. So I always just thought it was a Cape Town thing. No, not actually. I think it, I've seen them quite a bit in Australia. Oh, really? In the UK? Yeah. Okay, fabulous. How do we get making them? Very simple. In here, we've got some butter. We've got some eggs and sugar. That's mm -hmm. been whipped together with a bit of... Well, it's salted butter, very important. Always a bit of salt and mm -hmm. a bit of vanilla in there. Okay. So now, if you're avoiding lactose, butter's actually fine because there's trace elements of lactose. So you're fine to have it. Yes. Obviously, if you're just avoiding it completely, fine. That, that, I understand that. But uh, I think butter should be great for that. Then, to that, we're going to add some flour. So essentially, what we're making is a very, very simple cake batter. Okay. That goes in. Um, and all a lamington basically is, is a sponge. A cake. That's been cooked, cut into portions, dipped in a beautiful um, cocoa sauce. Okay. And then rolled in coconut. Amazing. I'm actually going to go find out where it actually originated because it's quite an odd... <laughs> yeah, you're seeing that. It's quite an odd um, recipe, I think. I mean, who ever thought about making a cake, dipping it, and then rolling it again? Someone yeah. very smart. Very smart, very smart. So so what you're supposed to do Just without the getting ingredients everywhere, <laughs> basically you end up with a beautiful, beautiful soft batter. All you do yeah. is you pop it into a baking tin. I always like lining it with baking paper. It literally just pops right out then. Okay. So you can see what a beautiful sponge we have over here. Yes, Let's perfect. Get right so um, you don't, obviously let it cool down first. That's gonna also allow the cake itself to absorb a lot of that cocoa sauce yeah. that you're gonna make. So cut nice little squares. I mean, sponge cake is just so good on its own or di dipped as a lamington. My grandmother makes the best one, but it's she? she calls it a Madeira cake, not a sponge cake. Because it is so delicious. I don't blame you, Grandma. It's the best cake ever. This is a recipe for Madeira cake. Yes. Yeah, so perfect. Okay, amazing. So all I did is I actually Same added thing. a bit of the soy milk to the actual batter to get it that nice texture. In here, I've got some cocoa, a little bit of mm -hmm. sugar. I actually want to add a little more. Let me just use from this one. Yeah. So it's Yum. normally you would use like normal dairy milk. I like using the soy milk. I actually love the flavor of soy milk. I love the flavor of yeah, soy milk because delicious. I don't really have a lot of dairy, but soy is amazing. Soy is delicious. Then give it a good mix. I'm going to try and give it a little bit of, so you can see what I'm mm, working mm, with. Mm. Uh huh. All that chocolatey goodness. All okay, that chocolatey can I help goodness. you dip? Sure. Well, so you dip, you take you dip, your, you dip. I think I know maybe how it came about. <laughs> how? If you think about this, like if you have a nice stale dry Madeira cake, yeah. that'll actually work best. So maybe there's a way I either use leftovers. Oh, perfect. Yeah. If the cake was going a little bit, well. Okay. There we go. Oh. Now you're going to say the Portuguese oh. think about everything, don't they? They do. So are we saying this is a Portuguese <laughs> recipe? No, you know what the thing is? They say a boer mark a plan, but a porter mark twee. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. And then you just dip it into okay, the coconut. Dipping. There you go. I like when it's. I mean, I like when it's very, very soggy. No, I like. I mean, I make this so chocolatey. Ugh, just like that. Oh, and it's so look simple. Look at that. That's it. How good is this? <laughs> now remember to SMS the keyword Clover to double three six five zero to get this recipe sent directly to you. And if you need a little reminder of how to make it, just watch this. Oh, this is perfect.
Made with love by Clover. Now, after the break, we have the Woodstock darlings performing live in the loft. Guys, oh, yo, yo. He called me darling son. He called me darling son. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss out for that. Oh, yo, yo. He, he called, called me darling son. I, oh, yo, yo. <laughs> Clover, good hope, soy milk. Soy goodness, naturally. Made with love by Clover. This coming Thursday on Winner Home. The pressure is on with only one week left to completely design and decorate their kitchen spaces. Follow the design duos as they transform their plans into reality. Ring, ring. Hello. Will their ideas be a recipe for success or will it all come crashing down? We would love to know ourselves. <laughs> we always start with a mess and end up with wowza. Catch the design drama on Winner Home. Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. on SABC3 with a repeat on Saturday at 3 p.m. The stage is yours. Winner Home, proudly brought to you by Capitech and Private Property with Samsung products designed for your connected lifestyle. Grand prize luxury penthouse apartment by Bowen Properties. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Handheld. One, two, one, two, one, two. This is your chance to win the home you've always dreamed of. Enter the Winner Home competition by voting for your favorite design duo on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance of winning a fully decorated apartment at Pardaflay Lifestyle Estate, developed by Baldwin Properties worth over 3 million rand. Plus, you'll automatically be entered into the weekly draw where this coming Thursday night, you could walk away with a Samsung 12 kilogram front loader washing machine with Wi-Fi, ad wash, eco bubble technology and smart control. And if that's not enough, Capitec clients stand a chance to win a further 5,000 Rand in cash. Competition details plus T's and C's can be found on the private property website. Winner Home, every Thursday evening at 7.30 on SABC3. The stage is yours. Express yourself. Happy Monday.
day. Welcome to Afternoon Express on SABC3, where the stage is yours. Now the Woodstock darlings aim to recover traditions, preserve culture, and build on a legacy that the future generation can be proud of. Here to perform a scene from their musical production, Satin to Sequence, More Than the Minstrels, it's the Woodstock darlings, ladies and gentlemen. Take it away. Great. That was so cute. That was absolutely yeah, cute. <laughs> that put me in such a good mood to kick off this week. I don't know about you ladies. <laughs> no, listen, you look too cute in that outfit. Yes, so how do you? Know. Are you taking that home? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to take over that leading lady spot. I see, I, I see, I definitely girl. think that being, what did they call it, the, with the, the first guy in the front, the little drum majorette. Yes. I think that should be your new role <laughs> for Twitter and VR star. Funny story, I used to be a drummy growing up. Really? From you? grade two all the way up to national level in high school. I've seen no. you've been a drummer. A hundred percent. So I could fit right on in with the minstrel. Can you throw one of those batons? Yes, yeah, I can. It's called a sabi. A sub, a, and then you turn and I can do a 360. <laughs> I know hidden tricks, but we can show that to each other this weekend. Okay, please. What was you your bring favorite part of the show today? Photos. I yes. will, actually will. My favorite part has to be Mommy Monday edition. I'm not a mother yet, but I always learn so much from each and every segment that you take yeah. over so and I think that is such a critical topic that we're discussing today yeah so I loved it for me was John Sane yeah, John was definitely a super winner. inspirational guy and fun. I can't wait to go and read his books yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and our viewers get an opportunity to win one so that's yeah. also quite exciting thank you so much for joining us today um, we'll be here tomorrow same time same place for our cook along and joining us on the cook along yes. is DJ Zinte <laughs> wait to see her in the yeah. loft. Yeah. That's going to be super cool. Until then, good night and God bless.
Clover. Another feel-good production.